Say hello to my little friend. This is the Euro Flasher. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another upload of It's a Dire Thing. Rob here. Thank you very much for tuning in. And before we get any further on this, please hit that subscription button and the notification. This way you'll always be up to date. So where am I today? I am in Kingston, Ontario, visiting the folks, which is absolutely awesome because we got a couple of things that we're going to be doing uh, very tomorrow, actually. We're heading up uh, back up to Huntsville. <laughs> yeah. So we're actually going up there. We're going to go pick up a little sport boat, a sport canoe. So um, that's going to be a whole new adventure, a whole new journey uh, for the next video that will be coming up. But today I decided while I'm here and we're on downtime uh, because I rode from Toronto to Kingston on my Tenere, I said, uh, let's uh, do something because I've always wanted to do it and I've never had the opportunity. And that is the Euro Flasher. So yeah, I was super lucky to obtain um, the European spec flashers here uh, from some very good friends uh, over over the uh, the great waters, we can say. Um, and that's uh, one thing that I wanted to do today. Um, so we're going to be swapping out the front flashers and the rear flashers. Tonight we'll start with a front flasher. The flip, 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 flip. So <laughs> tonight we will start with the front flashers. Um, very simple to do so what all it's going to take here is these three little bolts here this whole panel is going to come off and as you know the stock flashers I mean not only are they just flimsy uh, but they're actually held in place with just a little plastic tab press fit into the body panels yes I prefer them I have no problem against the big pumpkin flashers uh, but I thought the nice little white euro flashers would be super super cool as you can see there's a huge difference in size um, but I do like to retain the stock style flashers this way. Uh, it's that rubber piece. So they are, you know, very bendable. They are, uh, you know, very forgiving when it comes to doing some off-road trails and stuff like that. And if you lay it down, you know, at least if anything, worst case, you know, the flasher is just going to basically pop out of the body panel and you can pop it back in and keep on riding for the day. Uh, whereas, you know, if you buy some accessory ones and, and they're hard and, and they're stiff and they're very cute and all, but yeah, if you ever lay it down or if you break it or knock it or walk it and bang it, um, once it's broken, it's limp and it's going to be limp for a long time. And well, nobody likes a limpy, right? So let's get to this. I am going to basically take off these three bolts here. Super simple. Uh, they are a, an eight millimeter or you can use a Torx style screw. Um, this is on the Tenere 700 2022. Um, I'm using, <laughs> look at this, this. This tool set here, this tool set um, is going to be well over, well over, you know, 18, 18 years or no, sorry, sorry. I moved here uh, 22 years ago in the Toronto region. So even before that, so it had to be another 10 years and even before that. So almost, almost 40 years old, if not more. So um, Gramfer, again. Um, I'm using your tools. I promise I will put them back. I will not lose it. Uh, at least this one, it's a 10, it's an eight millimeter, not a 10 millimeter, because God knows where the 10 millimeters always go. They're always disappearing here. So anyways, let's get to this. <laughs> Enough talk and more, more, more actually doing, right? So just allows me to take this off. Um, then on the inside, there is also a couple of little rivet plugs that you kind of have to push in. Oh, no, actually, this is also an 8 mil. So here, let's come and take this one off as well. So normally, like on a sport bike and stuff like that, um, they're like little push rivets, pop rivets, right? So um, on the Tenere, funny enough, it's still... Oh, the one up here has always been a pain in the butt to try and get. You know what? Let's do it this way. You push it forward, right? and you kind of bring it back, right? Um, there's still the little plastic rivet up at the top here, but I find it's always easier. To take it off, because it holds this radiator kind of covering to take it off when you have this actually off. 
because it is so high up, um, it's a bit of a nuisance, right? So in regards to actually taking the flasher off, there's a, a three pin connector here and you got the clamp, the clamp, the clip, whatever you want to call it, just here. You kind of just lift that up with your nail and then it can slide right out. So um, fairly, fairly simple in regards to what uh, all it takes in order to access this while you have access to your right side panel just behind the fuel tank. So right at the corner of this fuel tank, right there where my finger is, is the auxiliary plug. So that plug would uh, work your heated grips if you use the Yamaha heated grips. Myself, I went with an Oxford heated grips. Um, so that's where you're actually gonna get your power source from. So a lot of heated grips, you can get the, the pre-wires and you would actually go and run it all the way to the back and connect it to your battery. Um, that's okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Personally, myself, I like to run a, my auxiliaries with the ignition key switch, right? So I know that when I turn the key off, there's absolutely zero power going to it. So if you want to do that, the power for that, and it's a three prong plug, um, goes right here. Though there's only two power sources to it, it's still a three prong plug. Eh, weird. Anyways, that is right there, so you can access to that, and that's super simple to do. Um, and then other than that, it's fairly simple. So go ahead and take this off. So basically this is just a clip. And as I said here, it's only a little plastic backing plate here. So it's, it's super, super, super simple. Ow. <laughs> Try to make it super, super simple here. Got to use a screwdriver, make it easier. If you end up falling over, um, you know, it kind of just dangles down. You can kind of put it back in. It's, it's, you know, it's a pre-fit preset rubber, kind of damper piece and two so look at that that is so much nicer I mean really big really huge difference like big pumpkin versus little bit of winky so that is really really nice now the only thing I am losing going with the Euro spec flasher um, is in Canada or North America we have a three wire flasher Whereas the Euro, it's only a two wire flasher. So is that a big deal? No, because I think it's only Yamaha and maybe, I don't even think there's that many out there that actually use um, a daytime or a running light flasher mount system uh, other than Yamaha, really. Um, so anyways, let's go and plug it in and just make sure it works. Um, otherwise I'll have to kind of swap out and uh, change the wiring so that it does work on a flash. Basically, that's what we want and not on a, uh, not on an on, right? So there we go, it works. It flashes, look how nice that is. Uh-oh, why are you going to a hyper flasher? Why did it do that? It's a bulb though, it's not, it's not an LED. Ooh, I don't get it. Slow and fast. I wouldn't need a resistor, would I? Look, it starts off slow. Well, what I may have to do then is I may have to go out and get uh, a flasher relay, I guess. So anyways, we're gonna continue on the other side. We're gonna swap them out. We're gonna swap out the back ones as well. Uh, the back ones is a lot more to take apart. You have to take apart the whole body panels and all that stuff. Um, so we'll do that once we've done that. If I find that there's a hyper flash with them, though I thought the bulb, maybe the bulb wattage is different that causes it because it's not an LED. It's it's just a regular tungsten bulb. Um, so maybe the resistance of that bulb is different. If that's the case, no big deal. I do have flasher relays at home and that's just simply a plug and play. So just take it out, put it in. Um, that would add uh, some more resistance to the flasher loading unit, which would then slow down the flash again. So. We'll do that, we'll see how it goes, and uh, then we'll kind of recap from there. So there you go, guys. Let me get to that, and uh, yeah, we'll kind of do a walk around once it's all done, and hopefully uh, we'll see what comes of it. All right. All right, so now we are getting to the second portion of the uh, super European Euro. <laughs> the flushers for the back ones here. So um, I'm hoping 
um, this is going to work right here. So um, I, I would presume the length is going to be the same. Uh, there wasn't any change in the Tenere, whether if it was Canadian or European. Uh, so the one thing I did notice when I did install these, and I and I was sure, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe they are LED. They they, I'm looking inside, and I don't want to open it up, but these may be LED. Why I say that is because um, I've done both front now and when I go to turn the, the flasher on, uh, it starts slow because I, I think I'm still running with the tungsten lights here in the back, uh, which is causing a resistance and then uh, starts to go into a hyper flash. So I'm guessing that's when there is a lesser of a resistance on the actual lighting when it comes through. So it doesn't matter. I do have a LED flasher relays. Um, actually, I just ordered up one on Amazon, which I should be getting here tomorrow. So I hopefully will be able to uh, install the flasher relay even before I get back on the road and head back to Toronto. So today, what I'm going to do is we're going to kind of fast track here through um, in regards to um, uninstalling the back panel so I can actually go ahead and install this. Um, there are quite a few videos out there uh, showing you like step by step on how that is done. I don't really think it's necessary for myself to kind of go through all that. Um, there's no point in keep uploading the same kind of videos over and over again by different viewers here. Uh, but it is seems to be a fairly simple process, just lengthy, like a lot of a lot of hardware, a lot of intricate components that are kind of attached to each other, which you have to kind of take everything off just to access. Um, the rear tail. Now again, most of those videos are, are people who are actually doing the tidy tails where I am not doing a tidy tail. So hopefully I can get away with a little bit less um, disassembly, but we'll see how it goes from there. Um, right now um, we do have the, the rear uh, tail piece here that um, I've already loosened up and I've taken all the bolts off so that's fairly simple you got those two knobby bolts there um, you got to take the side panel off with three bolts and then you got a little rib nut and a couple other little bolts and then you got the uh, four allen screws up at the top and then there's four down or six down on on the underside and once that's done oh no with the magic of uh, <laughs> a computer and and not being having to film everything at the same time, we now have uh, complete access here. Look at that, there's the ECU, oh, that's pretty cool. Eh? Um, on the other side, I can see that's where we got the flasher relay as well. Um, we do have all the connectors here. So this is where the actual uh, flasher connectors are. So the flasher wires are here. Um, hopefully, like I said, I can kind of uh, be able to feed my wires through. That would be really, really nice. I really don't wanna have to start taking the whole set apart, but we'll see how it goes from there. Um, slowly we'll just kind of keep on working at it uh, for the most part everything is either uh, a four mil allen a eight mil socket and a torx uh, so again depending on what you have um, for the most part regular common tools should be um, usable um, let's just take a look here that is definitely not for the flasher uh, this is the flasher here's the other there's flasher one and that's probably flasher two and that looks to be uh, oh no female female okay so yeah no okay so far we're maybe still good here okay <laughs> panic moment so you know what I'm gonna do actually let's do a test here um, let's pull these guys off and just first off test the lights um, and then we can also identify which one is which and then we can also see if it hyper flashes and then make sure that it is actually the flashers that I'm plugging into before I start taking all this apart and then realize, oh my God, right? So uh, where is my key? But if these are LEDs and whatnot like that, because if they'll go straight into a hyper flash, then we definitely know um, that they are LED and I will require um, a resistor in order to kind of slow it down, right? So let's do the left side flash. There we go. So as you can see, we're definitely going into a hyper flash right away, both front and back and the right side. There we go. So they are definitely an LED or a very little resistance in regards to uh, flasher wise. Um, so at least I know they work. All they have to do then is, like I said, is just get the relay. So left side, gray equals left side. That's all I need to know. So there we go. Then I can continue to kind of disassemble what I need to disassemble and hopefully it's not too much to get access to these flashers. 
again, um, there were some videos out there that it just showed uh, people having to take apart absolutely everything um, just to gain access is, is absolutely crazy and I really hope I don't have to do that. <laughs> wow, so yeah, I mean, uh, if I knew it was going to be this much of a cluster cluster of a uh, cluck cluck, um, I would have actually brought my... Uh, my uh, tidy tail and I would have actually installed the tidy tail but uh, you know I'm still gonna kind of keep the uh, original mud flap just due to the fact that it helps kind of stop the spray and sometimes I, I don't know I'm, I'm kind of like on the fence about the tidy tail there but at least uh, if I do decide that I want to do the tidy tail later on I know how much work is involved so um, definitely definitely uh, like I said you have to take everything apart in order to access just to access these wires in order to get it to 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 do the swap out so so far we've got the one swap out here so you can actually physically take a a, a gander and you can see the difference so this is the standard north american uh, pumpkin as everybody kind of refers to it as and now this is the actual euro light itself so uh, definitely much more a discreet much cleaner much smaller much nicer um, equally high visible as well um, the only thing like i said this is now running on a less resistance uh, of a flasher so it does tend to get into the hyper flash uh, but that's a very simple fix in regards to using a relay for that so um, so I'm gonna continue working on here so um, there's definitely a couple of zip ties there that you're gonna have to replace because the factory does like to put quite a few zip ties in order to keep all the wires uh, constricted against the the body panels um, so we'll definitely be replacing that but there is a lot to do and you just kind of kind of reverse your sequence in regards to putting it all back together here so um, lots of screws lots lots of hardware lots of body panels lots of work just to do that one flasher kit so um, it's definitely a good afternoon front and back again the front is simple you can do that with your eyes closed um, the work is all here in the back right so um, yeah you want to get into that back you got to work it buddy so <laughs> There you go, man. I'll continue to work this thing out and uh, we'll get it going. So hopefully it uh, won't be too, too much longer now. Um, just kind of rooting all my wires. I had to cut through everything. And uh, now I'm just basically removing it all. Um, again, like I said, I really do like the, the, the function. Oh my God, my knees are too old for this. Um, I do like the function of the, the stock flashers. Um, I like that, you know, it's got that rubber inserts. Um, and the rubber body um, just allows it to to flex a lot more. Um, yeah, it looks fantastic when you're riding on the trail and it's just flopping around. Uh, but you know what? Again, um, I'd rather it flop around, pop out, and then I can pop it back in, uh, almost like on the side of the trail, um, than um, having it broken and and just hanging there and just being um, a god awful nuisance uh, until you get home. And then have to buy them and replace them right these things you never replace unless you like really crash hard and if you crash hard um, then there's definitely more uh more damage than just a flasher so um you probably be wrecking yourself pretty bad as well so for the most part it's all done here i'm just kind of like i said feeding all the rubber pieces back in feeding the wires back through uh, get back follow the same pattern as what we did to take it all off and then uh, get those zip ties back on there just to, to keep everything nice, nice, tight and secure. So it's uh, tedious work. It's not hard, just time. It's all about time, right? And, and just enjoying yourself. So do it on a nice sunny day, get a beer or whatever like that, chill out, have fun and just do it, right? So this is a nice part about having a garage and being able to actually physically see what we're doing with some tools and stuff like that. So. <sighs> Get her all gun and then we'll do the walk around and you can take physically take a look and see what it looks like with a flashers now uh european spec <laughs> all right so there you have it guys i mean uh for the most part we're going from that big huge flasher to these nice little super super clean european style flashers so yes we're going to be dealing with a hyper flash for now right uh, but uh, tomorrow we're gonna come in here it's a fairly simple fix 
Uh, we're just going to take off this relay that's right here and we're going to replace that relay with the uh, LED flasher relay. So that's going to stop uh, the hyper flash here, uh, what we don't like in an America and uh, or, or North America, sorry. Um, so it just doesn't draw attention to the law enforcement. But other than that, it's a, it was a fairly simple procedure. Just there was a lot of work in regards to taking everything off in the back. So um, wasn't hard. Just a lot of bolts, a lot of screws, lots of items that need to be removed in order to, to get it all to fit on properly there. Uh, but for the most part, it's done. So we're just going to finish off with the body panels there. Uh, so in the next five minutes, she'll be back to normal. Uh, but other than that, guys, it was fairly simple. So y'all can do it and just kind of cleaned up, make it your own personal bike. So until next time, y'all be safe, have fun, take care. And don't forget, keep it covered. All right.